Hey guys, it's Katie. I'm coming to you from the position of I couldn't give a flying monkeys anymore about being perfect and I am just going to film something because I've basically just had a little mini breakdown about making videos because of the fact that everything wasn't perfect. I'm one of those people that's perfectionist and if something isn't 100% perfect I get down about it. I mean over the past few months of creating videos I've been forcing myself to just put out something um, because even if I don't think it's good somebody else might think it's good and you don't learn unless you try so that's what I've been doing over the past couple of months but today I don't know why all of a sudden I decided that it wasn't good enough so I've filmed this review about a million times and a million times I have deleted it again so I am just going to do it now and not care whether it's 100% perfect or not today I'm going to be talking about Shades of Grey by Jasper Ford. Now Shades of Grey is set in the future, the hundreds of years in the future in fact, where society has changed so much that it is now run by colour and whatever colour you can see denotes how high up on the social ladder you are. If you can see purple, for example, then you are at the very top of the ladder and are highly respected. But if you can't see any colour at all, then you are a grey and you are at the very bottom of the ladder. So this story actually revolves around Edward Russett who is a red and he and his father are going to East Carmine where his father is going to be a swatchman which is basically a doctor in our world. On his way to East Carmine he meets Jane who is a grey. He then again meets Jane in East Carmine and that acquaintance is something that truly changes Eddie as a person. He learns that the society isn't actually all that it seems. There is a lot of underlying truths that aren't known to everybody. I thought that the world building in this story was absolutely brilliant. Upon reading the book, you are dropped into a world where the society has been running for hundreds of years. It doesn't tell you in one section. It gives a gradual knowledge of what's going on and the history of the society of colour and I think this is absolutely brilliant and this does make for a slow read but I don't see that as a negative point a lot of the time in books if you are dropped into a society you get just a section of a synopsis about what the society is about but in this it doesn't quite it doesn't come across the same way. You learn about it gradually and not just in description but in the way that characters talk and the way that characters talk about the society and the rules of the society because in the collective as it's called there are a lot of different rules and some of these rules are actually labelled at the top of the chapter pages which I thought was a really good idea and some of the rules are said by characters and it just puts everything into a real circumstance rather than just telling you facts it puts it into real life situations and because of this I found the world building to be absolutely fantastic the story was actually shown in the point of view of Eddie it expressed his opinions about everybody and everything about the world around him and it also showed the development of his character Eddie as a character was one of those kinds of people that sticks to the rules and does everything as a society he tells him to and doesn't like to stray from what the society thinks is regulation and when Eddie starts to realize that everything isn't as it seems I thought the development of his character within those situations was really good it wasn't just a oh I like everything about the society and then oh everything's everything's a lie let's go shout on it from the roofs because he spent his whole entire life running by the rules of the collective and suddenly he's been dropped into the idea that everything isn't as it seems so he's got his doubts along the way he has his questions and sometimes he asks the wrong questions but he's figuring things out and t by the end of the book he is almost totally different character even in himself and his personality and I think that's the way that Jane's Jane's influence as a grey on him has also had. She helped him to stand up for himself a little bit more and he just became a stronger character overall. Jane was an absolutely brilliant character. She was she had such a dry sense of humour and was ridiculously sarcastic that it was unreal. In some ways I found myself relating to Jane a lot just because of those aspects but I'm not really a violent person and she was a violent person so in that way we actually differ but 
I found her to be so insightful and the fact that she was the kind of person that, that would talk back to the higher authorities. And that was why she was looked upon as one of the worst greys in East Carmine, just because of the fact that she was violent and rude and sarcastic. I thought that Eddie and Jane's relationship was really interesting to read in the way that they just seemed to bounce off one another. And in a way, they enhance each other's characters by being around each other. They made each other learn new things about the other. And although for the majority of the time Jane hated Eddie, you could sense that there was a mutual agreement somewhere deep down between them both. Each of the other characters in the collective were absolutely hilarious. They were so vibrant and fun to read about and they were all different. They, they just had a range of traits about them and each colour has a different stereotype and each person within that colour had a different way of interpreting that stereotype. I thought that the characterisation of every single person in the book was brilliant. Everyone was thought out, nobody was missed out, and there wasn't any one person that was that lacked characterisation and personality. For a book to have so many characters with so many personalities, I just think that's a feat to keep you actually interested in itself. Because sometimes when there are more than about five characters in a book it gets a bit confusing and characterization isn't generally as deep and intricate but i found myself understanding each character and even though i got annoyed at a lot of the characters at least i was feeling something towards those characters and i thought that was an absolutely brilliant aspect of the book I absolutely loved the writing so much. I thought it was an absolutely hilarious book to read and I actually found myself on occasion laughing out loud. And like the whole thing with me not crying in books, I never normally properly laugh out loud. I was probably laughing at this. I found it absolutely hilarious. It's just the bluntness of it all. And I think the sarcasm of the characters also enhanced the hilarity of it as well. There were some sections that were so stupid that it was just so funny. Sometimes the characters were so naive and what we find obvious in this world may not have been so obvious in their world. Let me just find something. Because of the fact that this extract actually contains a few spoilers, I might actually edit what I read slightly. I showed him the utensil that had been embedded in my backside when I was thrown into the Yetta VO. It wasn't really a spoon, but then it wasn't a fork either. It had a spoon-like shallow scoop, but with the addition of the three tines of a fork. I handed it to Demove, who stared at it intently. I, called, I call it a spork, I said. How ingenious, remarked Violet. Whatever made you think of a brilliant name like that? It's engraved on the back. Oh. It's just little things like that. Like, it's just little little quips, little quotes, little things that you can remember for a long time. And I think that's what's so brilliant about Ford's writing. I've heard a lot of really good reviews on Ford's books, um, including his Thursday Next series as well, which I plan on reading sometime in the future. But he likes to bring in other stories, stories that we have in our world at the moment. Like at the beginning of the book, um, there are a few attractions that Eddie and his father are going to go to before they go to East Carmine, and one of them was the Oz experience, I believe it was called, which is basically about how they weren't quite sure if the setting of The Wizard of Oz was real, and they were debating about whether flying monkeys were real. I just love reading about things that we know here at the moment. I just think it's so funny to hear someone else's view of what we know as normal and the way that they can interpret it and view it. If you hadn't guessed already, I absolutely love this book and this kind of this is the kind of book that makes me think about the society as it is at the moment and it makes me question things. Obviously I'm not going to do an Eddie Russet and try and change things and find out everything, but it makes you wonder what's actually going on. I think for a book to have that kind of effect on you is absolutely fantastic and I applaud Ford for creating that interest in me. I really, I really want you guys to read it and I really hope that some of you guys have read it as well because I'd love to hear what you think. I personally think that this is one of those books that's up for a lot of discussion because it has a lot of issues that are intertwined in the story I believe and I'd absolutely love to hear what everyone thinks about this. So if you've read this book please let me know in the comments below. So anyways I think that's all from me and I will speak to you later. Bye!